Today is the 9th of December, 2014, and this is episode 168. This show is intended for informational and educational purposes only. What cryptocurrency enables is new, empowering, and exciting, but we're not experts. Just obsessed companions walking the road towards a more peer-to-peer future. Welcome to Let's Talk Bitcoin. This is Stephanie with you, and I am talking with Doug Scribner from Watch My Bit. Hey, Doug, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Stephanie. How are you? I'm doing awesome. It looks like you are kind of nestled away in a cubicle of sorts. We are recording video of this interview, which will be probably available on the platform that we're going to discuss today, but we'll, we'll get into that just in a few minutes. Are you actually nestled in a cubicle? I am nestled in a cubicle where I work here in Bloomington, a suburb of Minneapolis. So you've got a a day job, which is where you're working right now. And I don't know if you want to talk about that, but you've also got a side project going on, which I think is pretty exciting. And this is something that we've talked about before on Let's Talk Bitcoin. It has to do with the world of content monetization. And of course, as podcasters, we are very interested in this. My co-host Adam B. Levine has given talks before about monetizing YouTube videos. In fact, I think the first talk that he ever gave at a Bitcoin conference was called something like YouTube is broken. And it's true. YouTube is broken. (laughs) There are lots of people creating amazing content and putting it out for free on YouTube. And yeah, they provide a hosting platform, but they really don't compensate the content producers. And there's not a direct link between the consumers and the producers either. The producers are really kind of going for views and then hoping that they'll get ad revenue from YouTube. But why don't you explain that all, Doug, and tell us why YouTube is broken. Kudos to them. Hats off. They did provide a platform for many creative people to show the creativity and to get noticed. But you're right. They're rewarding advertisers. You know, when you see, you know, a video which has a lead in commercial that you can skip and then it puts a commercial on top of your video. That money goes to the advertisers almost completely. And 10,000 views on YouTube, if you're a partner, and if people watch the ads, you will get about 50 to $100. That's it. That's not much for 10,000 views. Think about what you have to do to get a video up to 10,000 views. You have to say something really controversial. You have to make an ass out of yourself. You have to do something spectacular. You have to have great production. You have to show some skin or something like that. You know, you have to do something outrageous. <laughs> well, but there's a lot of YouTubers who get more than 10,000 views, who regularly get 10,000 views per week, per video, and they just mount and mount. And there's those YouTubers who are in the millions of views and who get hundreds of thousands of views per week. Holy cow. And they're still getting just peanuts, you know. And so what we were thinking of was, man, if there's a way to directly connect the artist with the consumer, where you're not paying the advertisers and a middleman, you're paying your favorite artist directly. You know, I want to reward Stephanie Murphy for her great hot tub video interview, which, by the way, you can see on Watch My Bit. That was a great interview, by the way. <laughs> right. We will talk more about this. Yeah. Or if you've got the comedy troupe that you're doing sketch comedy, or you've got a band, you know, and you've got a cool song and you've got fans and these fans watch your videos. You're, you're getting hardly anything when it comes to money from YouTube. Now, our platform, you have the choice of charging whatever you want. And I think we're one of the very first platforms that actually is using the promise of micropayments. Now, we're recommending nine cents for the lowest amount, but still try to you can't do nine cents on a credit card. You, you have to do at least 99 cents, in fact. So. Here's our formula. If you can charge 21 cents for a video and you get 10,000 views, you get $1,500. You know, on YouTube, you get 50 to $100. On watchmybit.com, you get $1,500. And it's like, it's, you know, orders of magnitude beyond what you would get on YouTube. And there's all kinds of creative models that you can leverage YouTube and drive your audience to watch my bit. So this is really cool. I I think we should just stop down for a minute. So what you're doing is you're taking advantage of Bitcoin micropayments. I don't know if you mentioned that directly, but this is all done with Bitcoin. And what people are doing, the content consumers are paying small amounts of money 
a few pennies to view a video instead of viewing it for free and relying on ads, which is YouTube's model. Of course, you know, you might want to use YouTube to drive traffic to watch my bit. But at Watch My Bit, you can watch a video and uh, get beyond this Bitcoin paywall by just sending a very small payment. This creates a direct link between the consumer of the content and the producer of the content, and they're getting paid way more directly, and they're able to make more money from it. So kind of like the music industry, a more peer-to-peer kind of model that cuts out these big, giant middlemen. That's exactly right. That's what we're striving for. And we think it's, it's kind of viable and pertinent. It all started because my business partner, Mark Hilgenberg, his brother actually is a Hollywood screenwriter and has been for 20 years, and he's made a living at it. And he would sell screenplays to a production company, and they would buy it for good money for the sole purpose of not producing it. Oh. And this is because they know that there's another movie that's coming up like it. We don't want the competition. Or they are thinking that maybe we'll produce it someday, but now we've got the rights to it, so we're going to hang on to it. But the idea that they buy it for the purpose of not producing it, for whatever reason, was driving him... It's so interesting because it sounds exactly like what happens with pharmaceutical patents, with software patents. The system of government-enforced intellectual property just really encourages people to buy up the rights to things and then sit on them so that the end result is that the consumer or the, the customer never gets to see those things. You're right. It's crushing creativity. And how much more creative content would we have? How many more options would we have? How many more people would be able to feed their families if they had a way of connecting directly to their fans? And that's what we're providing for people. And the ad model is an interesting thing too. I want to read you a couple of quotes and I'll tell you who said them. So here's one. I don't like that our attention is constantly for sale. That's one of them. Mm. Another one. Basically, we didn't know how to pay for the internet for everyone. So we decided to make the internet work like broadcast television. The guy who said that Mm. is Ethan Zuckerman. Do you know who he is? No. He's the inventor of the pop-up ad. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Recently, he came on to many, many video outlets or, you know, he's on NPR and uh, and big news stations saying, I am sorry for inventing the pop-up ad. And his point was to challenge the idea that we have to build businesses around advertising. I really do think there are other ways to do it. And he mentioned micropayments. He didn't mention Bitcoin, but he mentioned micropayments. So if the inventor of the pop-up ad is apologizing for creating this ad jungle out there where we're forced to view corporate ads constantly before we get our reward, that's pretty powerful. There's got to be another way, and we think we have found one. That is a very interesting quote you brought out there from Ethan Zuckerman. And uh, I didn't know about that, but it makes total sense. Now that people have been acculturated or accustomed to watching content for free and then paying for it by seeing ads, how are you going to get them to come on board with the idea of making micropayments before they can view content? Yeah, or even using Bitcoin, because how are people going to get Bitcoin or know about Bitcoin? Right. It it is a wall. It is a challenge. But I think our model is going to appeal to those groups or bands or comedy troops or content creators who have a following already. They have what we could call super fans. And the best example is these guys who create video game walkthrough videos on YouTube. And they're some of the highest hit YouTube and highest watched YouTube videos out there because they talk about the cheat codes and the, the secrets of navigating this, this particular video game. Every 11-year-old kid who knows that that video is now released for the new level of this video game is going to find a way to get 11 cents of Bitcoin to pay for it. And maybe the content producers is going to release it just one week early on our platform. For one week, you can watch it and pay 29 cents for it early. And then he puts it to YouTube for free. So that's a, a, a interesting model that content creators can use is sort of the sneak preview on a pay platform like ours and then move it to YouTube for free later on. But yeah, we're hoping for the super fans to drive their fans to watch their content. They're the ones who will find a way to get Bitcoin. So we think this will actually help increase the usage of Bitcoin from non-Bitcoin users. Yeah, that's, that's a really interesting idea. So actually, a couple of questions that immediately came to mind. 
on Watch My Bet, where you're doing micropayments for video views, if you pay once, can you watch the video unlimited number of times? Or do you pay and that gives you one ticket to watch the video? The way it's set up right now, it's, it's sort of a pay-per-view model. So at this point, when you pay for a video, you have access to it for 24 hours. That made sense because, you know, what if you click and you pay for it and all of a sudden your phone rings? Oh, shoot, you know, you got to go and or the laundry beeps or you fall asleep or something like that. Or something goes wrong. You know, your internet connection mm-hmm. crashes, for example. And so we wanted to give people a chance to watch a video for more than just a, a few minutes. Another idea was to do it for three times longer than the length of the video. But my colleague said, no, let's go 24 hours. So, yeah, it is currently mm-hmm. a sort of a pay-per-view model. And is there a subscription where you could buy like an all-access pass for some amount of money and then that gets distributed, kind of like Kindle Unlimited, where it would get distributed among the content creators? Is that two questions, like a, like a, like a sort of an account that you fill up with something and then spend it out to various different videos you choose? No, I'm, I'm just wondering if like, could someone go to Watch My Bit and buy the, the King all-access pass that gives them access to every video on the site for a month? and accept it's $5 in Bitcoin instead of paying piecemeal for each video. Not at this time. We are talking about doing something like that, though. Like The concept of, well, hey, I want to buy this video forever. I want to be able to watch mm-hmm. it continuously. So how mm-hmm. do I do that? And then that, So that'll be something we can add, think about going forward. A lot of great ideas out there. The other one is, like you said, all access pass for X amount of time or days or hours, something like that. So these are all ideas that some of our beta testers have brought up to us too. And they're great ideas and we're going to implement some of them for sure. Big question here is what kind of content, are there any restrictions on the content that's going to be available on this platform? Because obviously this has implications for porn. (laughs) And so are you going to go there or are you going to kind of not, (laughs) not go there? (laughs) On this platform, we're not going to go there. Uh, Maybe another platform that we'll, we'll we'll, uh, talk about in the future. But for this platform, we, we, we only want legal videos, obviously, you know, and we will take down anything that doesn't fit U.S. laws. But wait, everything is illegal under U.S. laws. <laughs> How could you possibly do that? Uh, right, exactly. But we also want people to upload videos only that they have rights to everything. Now, we're not going to be... Okay, well, actually, that's a serious question. Like, how could you possibly police that? Because if you want the content to expand and grow... It's going to be limited if there's somebody that has to manually watch each video and make sure it complies with the laws and isn't copyrighted and so forth. Like I said, not something we're going to police, especially this early on. We just won't be able to. We're going to encourage that this is an artist's platform. So art Mm -hmm. should be original art. If we get a complaint that, hey, this is someone who ripped off someone else, maybe we'll address it and ask the person, you know, do you have the copyright to this? If somebody comes to us with a subpoena, you must stop using this video. We'll cross that road when it comes there. This is a new platform. We're sort of still in beta, and we'll see what okay. happens. But. Okay, so it's going to be a, a more, a more laid-back model of uh, addressing those with how the site is marketed and also with complaints, if there are any, that will be what determines whether a video stays up. Got it. Yeah, yeah. I'm forming this picture in my mind. It's really interesting. I use a website called yogadownload.com. And I have a membership that lets me stream unlimited yoga classes from the site. And so, you know, I pay per year. And of course, I pay with fiat. They don't accept Bitcoin yet. Maybe they will listen to this and accept it. But uh, (laughs) but yeah, I pay for membership and I can do a yoga class every day if I want to unlimited. It's really nice. You know, I could imagine your site being somewhat like that. If there's no limitations on the content, except that you're not really geared towards adult material. Potentially, someone could have workout classes or someone could have an instructional podcast or a tutorial series or yeah. the possibilities are, are really limitless of what you could do with that. Correct. You know, and, and having a paywall allows, like you said, teachers with valuable things to teach to have their classes and now they can get paid for it instead of hoping and wishing for tips. You know, the tipping economy is moving forward and change tip is a great concept. Coinbase now just started doing a tipping widget as well. And that's fantastic. But that sort of puts the artist in the position of begging, (laughs) please tip my content. And people might watch it and forget to tip and they meant to at the beginning, that kind of thing. So Mm -hmm. with a paywall where you have to pay first, I think it's a really different model and and it sort of brings 
different creative ideas to the fore, we are going to implement this great concept. At the end of the video, the same QR code that you saw to launch the video will be displayed again at the end of the video with a message saying, if you'd like to further tip this artist, here's the same QR code. And then they can, the artist then knows where it came from if they have a different Bitcoin address for each video. It allows someone to say, hey, that was worth more than 29 cents. I want to give them a dollar. Or maybe it's like, hey, I know that this video is helping this band raise money for a tour. I don't want to watch the video again, but I am going to pay them mm. give them another five bucks right now. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah, I could definitely see that model applying to podcasters or anyone who kind of produces content on a semi-regular basis, you know, where perhaps the, the viewers could get access to it early or they could just have that extra incentive to tip and keep the podcaster going. Yeah. And there's really some really interesting ways to, you know, with leverage YouTube. Like, why not put the teaser video on YouTube and say, hey, see the full interview, I'd watch my bit, which is exactly what I did with your hot tub bikini video. Right now, if you go to YouTube and <laughs> search for Stephanie Murphy bikini hot tub video, you will see a little preview and a link for the full version on watchmybit.com. Or another model is to yeah, put... Her hurts. <laughs> By the way, Stephanie, it's only in beta right now, but it, we are, it is still the most watched video on our site. <laughs> uh, that's funny. For our listeners who are, who are hearing this and don't know what we're talking about, I went to the Coins in the Kingdom conference in October, and Doug was there, and he was uh, just getting ready to launch Watch My Bit, and did a Robin Leach-style interview in the hot tub with me and my partner, Brian Sovereign. And Doug was fully clothed, but... Uh, Brian and I were in bathing suits, so <laughs> he caught us at, at midnight in the hot tub, and it was uh, really fun. You can see the preview on YouTube, but you can see the full video on Watch My Bit. And I thought it was a, a great interview. It was really fun. Thank you. It was totally fun. And, and people, I was trying to get Stephanie to interview with me for the whole weekend. She was busy. You know, she's a sought-after speaker. She could never have some time. And finally... She's leaving in the morning. She goes, hey, Doug, I'm in the hot tub. You can come here and interview me if you want to. I had my clothes on, but I jumped in anyway because, you know, that's just the kind of ambush journalist that I am. <laughs> it was pretty awesome. You yeah. got some good interview skills, too. It was like a, pa a fast-paced and funny interview. So yep. cool. Kudos to you, yeah. Doug, for that. So, okay. Um, now everybody is sitting here at home and wondering – when is the porn version of this going to be out? Because, I mean, it's it's kind of perfect in a way. Like, porn is, uh, sites, as I understand it, I haven't run one myself, but as I understand it, they have a lot of trouble getting payment processors to actually work with them because none of them will create merchant accounts for adult-type uh, businesses. Sometimes they cost thousands of dollars a month to process credit cards. It's just a real hassle. Not only that, but there is a lot of porn out there that's just available for free. And so sometimes people are like, well, why would I go to a pay site when I could watch it for free and just deal with some ads? The model that you're talking about is kind of the perfect compromise between those two. So when is it coming? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I must say we did reserve the URL of spank my bit. So, you know, I don't know when it's coming, <laughs> but it won't be too hard to just replicate it over to another site. We want to keep them separate. We want the family version and the non-family version. And we actually have been in talks with a couple of ladies, you know, I don't want to say any names. There are some possibilities. And again, this intermediates the big male run production houses, if you want to go that track, and allows the artists to directly get paid, you know, and they can produce their mm -hmm. own content. And the ones that are the most popular will get the most hits or the ones that are the best produced or whatever will get the most hits. So it, it rewards people not based on random views. And this is true for YouTube, really, where YouTube views are free for the viewer to watch, except for the advertising, of course. So the number of views doesn't necessarily mean quality video. But on our platform, because you have to pay for it, if you've got a lot of views, that's probably going to be a really good video if people are willing to pay to watch it. It's a, it's a more accurate measure of, I think, quality and talent. So who sets the prices? Is it Watch My Bid or does the artist price their own video? The artist prices their own video. 
we were saying nine cents minimum, but you can go lower than that. But, you know, nine mm-hmm. cents and all the way up to as high as you think your people will pay. So if you have um, some content that is highly sought after, maybe financial advice, maybe some of those pickup artist guys with the latest tricks, <laughs> or maybe an instructor, a teacher, um, a comedy troupe, you know, a movie, they a can movie. charge whatever they want. Right, right. And by the way, on our platform, we have a never-before-seen sitcom that has Danny Trejo and Jane Lynch in it. And this came from Hollywood because it was produced, it was made, it's professionally and it's well done. It's called Scribes. It's one of our featured videos. But no one has seen it because it didn't go forward. It got squashed in the system for whatever reason. And we have the rights to it. That's really interesting. So... There's even ne- never before seen unavailable content up there. Right. So the artists are pricing their own content. And did the artists get to decide, like, what if you wanted to do an online course that was available through this platform and you wanted to give people access for like six weeks to your videos and they would pay some premium price for that? Is that something that would fit in with your business model or not really? I think that would totally fit in. And all of these options at weeks are is just a matter of coding so that's a great idea and i think we can make that happen pretty easily we had some ideas too like a gift like i want to give you access to my video or this video and then you can get a code and it goes right to that video and you don't have to pay for it so you can actually give gifts christmas presents to people so we can actually just parlay that into the, the course idea you know here is the gift for a course Use this whenever you need to, and you can watch my courses. It's work, but it's not hard. This episode of Let's Talk Bitcoin is brought to you by CryptoKit.com, the easiest, fastest way to send Bitcoins right from your browser. That's K-R-Y-P-T-O-K-I-T dot com if you'd like to learn more. Today's magic word is watch. That's W-A-T-C-H. Watch. You've got until the 13th of December to visit Let's Talk Bitcoin dot com or the Let's Talk Bitcoin iPhone app to enter it for your share of the listener rewards. looking for help. We're looking for a UX user experience designer and a web designer to come on board and help us uh, with some of the We all have day jobs at this point, you know, so this is bootstrapped completely from scratch. And uh, we could use some help. We could use some investors too. The website is watchmybit.com. That is our, our informational page, watchmybit.com. My email is doug at watchmybit.com. And Doug is D-O-U-G. The beta site, which is where people can see videos, and as of today, we are in open beta, so anyone can go and see the videos available, is beta.watchmybit.com. No www, just beta.watchmybit.com. And to address something you were, you were talking about earlier, some of the reasons we don't offer or we don't think we'll be offering some of these sign in and then sign up for videos is we we kind of want to get away from the whole sign up thing we want people to be able to Mm -hmm. spend their bitcoin without giving an email address to watch a video without having to become part of a a network now we will have the option of doing that but we want to have anonymous viewing so you can just scan a qr code launch a video is the website does it have an integrated Bitcoin wallet within the platform or does someone have to run CryptoKit or Electrum or Armory or whatever Bitcoin software or it's a mobile wallet so they can send the Bitcoin to you? The way it works right now is that and we are marketing Bitcoiners to Bitcoiners at this time because it is a Bitcoin centric site and our testers will all be Bitcoiners. The way it works right now is you basically have to have a phone and then you point the phone at the QR code on the screen and it launches the video. And you can do a search mm-hmm. on YouTube 
or watch my bit demo and I do a demo of how it works. Uh, the first video on our site will be the demo, which will be free. You can just, we can post three videos up there so people can see how, how it works. We'll be doing more of those. But yes, we will be incorporating the code where it looks to see, hey, there's a CryptoKit wallet on this browser already. Would you like to use CryptoKit? And then, of course, our mobile app, we have to hire a new team to develop that. But same concept. When you go to our website, you pick a video, it'll say, do you want to pay with Mycelium, Blockchain, or Coinbase? And then whatever wallets you have on your phone, it'll pull from that when you choose them. But right now, point phone at screen, scan QR code, <laughs> video launches. So people already have to be familiar with Bitcoin. It's not like something where they can load up a a wallet in their account. You're just skipping all that stuff and making it totally accountless and more anonymous, which I think is the way to go because people want speed. They don't want to deal with logging in and you don't want to be holding people's Bitcoins either. That's that's no fun. That is correct. Uh, We are not holding Bitcoins. We never hold them except for like an hour. We have we actually do a bit of good which is a charity processor. But David Duccini has partnered with us and he is processing our Bitcoin payments. So they come in and then they go to his service and then they go paid out right away to the artists. And now the advantage of that is because he is a charity processor, you can now select, hey, I want 10% of my income to go to Sean's Outpost, to go to the Free Stake Project, Mm. to go to the Humane Society. Whatever charity is available on Do a Bit of Good will be available to choose on our platform, too. Wow, that's cool. And what that also does, it now creates a virtuous circle because now that charity knows, hey, there's a guy who's paying us X amount from people watching his video. I'm going to promote his video to all of our supporters. And now you've got this charity who is pumping your video and your fans are pumping your video. So hopefully this is increasing your views and the charity wins and you win. And of course we win too. Win, 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 win. (laughs) What is your business model? I'm really curious about, about this because like how much does it cost you to basically host these videos and stream them out? Like, are you paying for bandwidth and on some server? Like what do you use on the back end to manage the video hosting? I hired a friend of mine to develop the prototype and I went to Queens of the Kingdom it was ready to go. I could have showed anyone, hey, look, scan, launch. So I hired him to do that. And I paid him about half of what I owed him. And then he said, Doug, I don't want you to pay me anymore. I want to be on board. He was so excited about the technology and, and he saw the, where it was going. So behind the scenes, yes, we have to pay for several things, hosting the videos and eventually hosting those videos on servers around the world because We don't want latency. So that cost, we're going to have to, we have to have a web hosting, of course. We have to have a video conversion, several machines converting videos. And the more people who are converting videos at the same time, the more machines we're going to need to do that. So we do have a lot of upfront costs. And for that reason, I'll just tell you, we take 25% of the income of the video. We pass on at least 75% to the artist. Some people say, well, that's a lot. That's a big chunk. Oh, yeah? How much does YouTube pass on to you? You know how many millions Google is making from advertising? And they give you slivers of, of, of slivers, you know? Yeah. And are you aware of any competitors, like anybody who's doing the same thing? Or because honestly, this is the first real video service that I've heard of. Like there were some other, there were some websites that, you know, can let you create a paywall and put content behind the paywall that can be unlocked with Bitcoin. Sure. But this is the first platform I've heard of that's based on video and uh, essentially disrupting YouTube. (laughs) Right. Well, I'll tell you this. Vimeo is is probably the second most well-known site. They allow paywalls, but of course it's credit card based and you can, you can charge a minimum of, I think $3 or something like that. They're not very big. But there has been some whisperings. There is a, an altcoin called Video, V-I-D-I-O. I don't know what happened. It might have been a scam coin. They talked about video-related stuff. And then, of course, there's BitShares Music, which came out recently that they're going to be doing the music platform, and, and that's really cool, too. They mentioned video uh, streaming, but it wouldn't happen until way after their music platform got settled, which isn't even going to be started until spring of 20. 20- 15. So what I like Mm -hmm. to say is, watch my bit. 
is not inventing a new blockchain. We're not inventing a web 2.0 platform. We're using off-the-shelf Bitcoin technology, if you can say that, off-the-shelf Bitcoin technology that already exists, that already works, that is working tonight, right now. People can go and pay with Bitcoin and watch some videos, including yours. So here's something that's really amazing that we think is going to have probably the most appeal, especially to bands and comedy troops. That is the ability to split payments. So if I have a, a band with a keyboard player, a guitar player, a drummer, a singer, and a bass player, five people. I can now say the singer gets 50% because he wrote the song and the guitar player gets 20% and then the keyboard player gets 10%. The bass player gets 1%, of course. So that is a way of bands to have automatic splits. So the money comes in, automatically split out to their own people. Comedy troupes, the same thing. We have four actors, uh, the editor and the, and the camera guy. You can have unlimited number of splits so that people can pay everyone involved and you don't have to rely on one guy to, hey, man, how come I didn't get paid for that last gig? Well, well you know, I drank it all or whatever the case is. Now, it's almost like a, <laughs> it's like a contract. It's like an automatic contract. You can set the, the, the rates right up front there. Video gets watched. I know as a bass player, I'm only getting 1% because that's all bass players are really worth. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the lights have gone off in your cubicle. I know, I know. It's <laughs> It's after 6 o'clock here, or 6.30 or something. It's after hours. It's Friday night. They're telling you to go out and have fun. But uh, thanks for bringing that up because that's really cool. I love that feature. I want that, okay, because I've had some experience. I have some audiobooks on audible.com. Often what, what they do is the narrator, which is me, will produce the audiobook basically for free for the author. The audiobook sells and the narrator gets a portion of the sale. The author gets a portion of the sale and then Audible gets a huge portion of the sale. <laughs> so but we have to rely on Amazon to do that, you know, and they're, they're not always fast. It takes a couple of months, but with this, it's instant. It's indisputable. It's not a human being. So how does that actually work on the back end? Like, does it use some kind of smart contract thing or... Nope, it's simpler than that, actually. Now, David Duccini, who's processing the charity link, and he also processes our payments, he has run mining pools, and mining pools routinely split, right? X oh, of people yeah. And, mine, and, so, and then you get a proportion of what you've mined. So the split technology has been out there for ages, but no one's applied it to a front consumer-facing platform. So that's how that's working. He's run mining pools. He's setting up our splits for us, and it's really a, a slick system. So you're right. I mean, no longer do we have to depend on the Byzantine rules uh, that we don't even understand from these corporate gatekeepers who pay attorneys and marketers and all these people, investors, and you don't even know half of them. And at the end of the day, you're getting a profit sharing, right? Well, maybe we didn't make any profit because we had to pay the attorney. You know, So there's all kinds of ways for mm -hmm. creative people to not get paid. So again, you're right. This is allowing everyone who's contributing to get paid directly and immediately when someone watches their video. That's awesome. All right. Well, I see myself using uh, Watch My Bid. I think I'm going to produce some content and uh, maybe consume some content too if there's good stuff up there, which I'm sure there will be. And uh, the Coins in the Kingdom interviews will be up. So I've got Tatiana Rose. I've got Bitcoin Girl, which is a fun interview. I've got Andreas Antonopoulos and Bruce Fenton, Jason King. Dobby Barker and uh, MK Lord. So these are never before seen interviews. Bitcoin would be interested in those to begin with. So there you go. Plus, the big thing is our sitcom. And if we can show Hollywood sitcom creators and producers, here's a successful sitcom that's getting paid. You should put your stuff up here too. There'll be a lot of unique, never before seen content here soon. It's the HBO or Cinemax to YouTube. <laughs> there you go. Thanks for listening to episode 168 of Let's Talk Bitcoin. Content for today's show is provided by Stephanie Murphy and Doug Scribner. Music was provided for this episode by Jared Rubens and General Fuzz. This episode was edited by Adam B. Levine. See you next time.